Can anybody hear me? Apostle, I think your mic is muted. Okay, I can hear you. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, do you hear, Kevin? do you hear an echo in the back? Okay, good. So I guess that echo is just going to be for me and for those that may come into Facebook. Glory to your name, Father. Glory to your name, Father. Thank you, Lord God. You're all, you're my everything. Come on, clear your mind. You're all, Prophet Neely. Good evening, Apostle. Good evening. Just clear your mind. I want you to clear your mind completely. Amen. Glory to your name, Father. Glory to your name. Thank you today, Lord God. We just usher the Holy Spirit into this class tonight. Uh, this is going to be a very important class. And, and one of the things you're going to understand about this class is that it's psychological warfare is being dealt with. That won't run dry. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Come on, we want to put him first. Jesus, cup that won't run dry. Your presence is everything to me. Just shut off everybody. Shut out everybody. Nothing matters but him. Who is like, who is like you, Lord? Who has this love, beauty, and this Nothing is, nothing in this world. Jesus, you're, Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Your presence, your presence is, is heaven to me. Your presence is heaven. Your presence. Your presence. Your presence. Your presence. Your presence is ever to me. Oh, Jesus. 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 O
Glory to your name, Father. Yes. Glory. Now, Father, as we begin cosmic economics, we thank you for moving us into dimensions. We thank you for moving us into realms that we haven't moved in. Break all psychological warfare concerning finance. Cause new money to come in. Cause a special anointing to be on the prophets, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. For what you have called in this generation. Give us what is divinely and rightfully ours in Jesus' name. Amen. We're at the top of page 44 affirmations. Everybody see that? Okay. The top of page 44 affirmation. So let's, I'm gonna, I'm going to say it. 44 or 34? Yeah, 34. Uh, wait, yeah, you're correct, Prophet is 34. And so I'm going to say it, and I want you to say it under your breath with me on three. One, two, three. I enjoy the very thought, the very idea, and the very feeling of success and prosperity. I enjoy seeing and hearing about the success and prosperity of others. I love and bless success and prosperity in all who are enjoying success and prosperity. My love and enjoyment of success and prosperity is a power that draws more and more and more success and prosperity unto me. And all the good that I deserve in God, I am success in God. I am prosperity. I love it. I enjoy success and prosperity. Thank you, Father God, in me. That is a prayer that you, you have to begin. Pastor Sherry, I'm waiting for you on face on um oh. Okay, if you can't make it, I understand. I understand. Um, so listen to the consciousness. That's the first thing I want you to hear. You listen to the consciousness of wealth. The, he, he's saying, first of all, you, your thought pattern, your belief system, you have to have a feeling of success. So how do you get a feeling of success? I want you to think back into the last time that you had a great victory in success. You, you, you had a home blessing. You had a car blessing. You had a financial breakthrough that you normally don't get. And so you take on that feeling. And when you take on that feeling, the key here is to lock into that feeling when times come that are contrary to the day that you had that feeling. And so if you listen to the consciousness of it, this is the consciousness of God. Because God created water. God created the whales, the fish. He created every, all the substance in the earth from a thought. So what we want God to do in us is change our thought towards wealth. A man doesn't become an attorney. He learns to be a attorney. He learns to be an attorney because he learns the language that it takes 
to properly have a conversation with the judge. So he changed his thought. Listen to what the Bible said. It says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, when Paul made that statement, he was in Corinth, Rome, Rome. He said, first of all, you can't be like Rome. You can't think like Rome. You have to be different. And if you're going to be dif different, it's going to be some challenges. It's going to be some psychological effects that you're going to have to deal with. Because when you begin to study the formula of changing thought, that's when the enemy will begin to deal with your mind, to cause depression, to cause anxiety, to cause frustration, and to get you to back off of the goals that you have set for your life. Let's, let's go to our subject tonight. I believe it's on page 35. Page 35, Prophetess Carter. What is the subject, Prophetess Neely? On page 35? Yes. Chapter 4, the, the pearl of great price. The pearl of great price. That is the subject, Cosmic Economics, page, what, page 35, chapter 4, Cosmic Economics. The pearl of great price. This is... This is where we are now. We're going to deal with this pearl of great price. Matthew chapter 13, verses 45 through 46. Read, Prophetess Carter. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man, seeking godly pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Are you willing to sell all you have to buy this pearl? Are you willing? To sell. All you have. To buy this pearl. Of great price. Buying and selling is the principle. Buying and selling is the principle. What is the principle? Principle 23, Cosmic Economics. Prophetess Carter. If you think the right thoughts, you will produce the right things. If you think. First of all, what kind of thinking do you have? Because your thinking is a manifestation of your thought. Thinking is continual. Thought is spoken. And so when you're constantly thinking, you're thinking because you're trying to create the right thought. You will produce the right result once you analyze what you are thinking about and focus on that one thought. Uh, I'll give you a sports analogy. Deion Sanders, Bo Williams, both of them played baseball. Baseball. They were multi-talented. They were thinking about baseball. Michael Jordan was thinking about baseball. And so even though Bo Williams, he could play baseball and they could play, they could do football. That is the thinking process, multiple thinking, but they came up with a single thought that will bring them the capacity, the full capacity, the full manifestation of that would produce the right thing. And all of them went into Bo Jackson from baseball to football. Deion Sanders from baseball to football. Michael Jordan, baseball to football. They had multiple thoughts 
but they had one major thought that produced the right result. And that's what you have to narrow in life. All of these thoughts that you have about life, what is the major one you need to narrow down to? Even when it comes to solving problems, even when you're dealing with situations, if you focus on sickness, you will never focus on healing. If you focus on poverty, you will never focus on wealth. If you focus on being single, then you will never get married. So you have to shift the thought in order to produce the right thing. Prophetess Carter, what do yes. you have to say? Well, you know, the word says, as a man thinketh, so is he. So therefore, your, as you said, your thoughts, you have to move your thoughts into that that you desire to have and not, not what you don't want. Not what you don't want, watch this now, or not what you are experiencing. Because really, your experience is not the truth of who you are. Okay. The, your experience will never match the truth of who you are. Okay? The rich get richer. Why do they get richer? They don't say the poor get poor. They say the rich get richer. Richness starts with thought. Richness starts with your thinking. And so read Prophetess Carter this paragraph. Okay. Page 35. Read. The kingdom of heaven is the mind and its thinking process. Okay, so now you have been living in the world. The world structure have taught you that you must do it, live their way. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of heaven comes and say, I want you to think kingdom, <laughs> pinnacle. Yes. I want you to think higher than the lower system of thought. Mm -hmm. So you have to make a decision of what type of thought you want to operate in. Read, Prophetess Carter. It is the principles of how the kingdom is run. It is the philosophy of it. It is the it is a philosophy, a way of thought. Many people have wrong thoughts, which result in wrong actions. They think the wrong thoughts, and as a result, they produce the wrong things. This is an important principle of the kingdom. If you put the wrong thoughts in, you will get the wrong things out. If you put the right thoughts in, you will get the right things out. How can we move down the road of success? How can we start to expand our imagination? How can we begin to broaden our thinking? How can we begin to expand our horizons? How can we change where we are living? How can we change our outward experience? Page 35, Tyrone. Okay, so now the kingdom philosophy of the pearl of great price. So how can you move down the road to success? What do you need to do? What do I have to do? How can you expand your imagination? You can expand your imagination by looking at the word because the word will always take you beyond where you are. The word, the Holy Spirit will challenge you to go beyond where you are. So how can we begin to broaden our thinking? Um, prophetess 
uh, Neely, what are you going to do to expand your thinking? Prophet Pastor Sherry, what are you going to do to expand your thinking? I'm going to look toward the word. I'm going to look in the word. And what Same. the Holy Spirit has to lead me to. Pastor read Sherry. The, I was going to say the same thing, to read the word and um, uh, okay. allow, allow him to lead and guide me into the truth. Really look at what it is that um, believe what he says uh, is possible for me and then okay. think and meditate on that thing. So we've been believing the word and hearing the word and living the word for years. But do the word create the manifestation that you're now experiencing? Um, watch this. I want you to hear this. I want you to listen to this now. Just met him two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Jesus. Now this is cosmic economics. It, it has been a journey, and so, and when I spoke in the Manpower program at TPJX, I introduced my daughter, Ona Brown, that you that yeah, you look at, yeah. Ona. All right, I met Ona when she's twenty-one. Now listen. Wow. Yes. So I think this. I think that's the last one. I don't know yet. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You know. I'm a baby Christian. I've been saying that long. <laughs> you know, that's why uh, I don't great. talk about people with condemnation. Yeah. Because I had a long period of my life. I was temporarily insane. <laughs> so, wow. so we can't pay back. So this is Les Brown teaching cosmic economics with Reverend Run. This is New York. Now listen to this. To own that, you have to manage stuff, and that's what I think that father should be a celebration of our deciding to live from a place of truth and integrity, taking more responsibility, becoming more engaged in our community, in our children's lives, and holding ourselves to a higher standard. We can be more concerned. There are too many young men who make it perfectly okay to get a woman pregnant and walk away. Oh. And not emotionally or financially involved in the children's lives. Wow. We need to draw the line on that. Women can't do that. We have got to, men have to stand up and do that. Yes. This is tremendous. Okay, 212 316 2177. And uh, we want you to call in your faith seat and do your tithes and offerings today. And um, I am excited about what God is doing. Now, we have Cosmic Economics, and I put a set in Les Brown's hand. And, um, you know, let, well, first of all, let, let me share this with you about Cosmic Economics. Now, listen. I want people to listen to me clearly on this. Because I, I studied uh, some of the wealthiest and most successful people on the planet. And what I like about Cosmic Economics, one of the things that, that you must understand is that some people are going to be offended just with the idea of being financially successful because we've been programmed, Lord, I'm not worthy. And as we begin to look at ourselves, look at where we are, where we want to go, results don't lie. If you come to this country, you can't around us. Why? Because if you don't develop a sense of deserving it, that I deserve, that I was born to be that I'm made in the life of God, that I've given authority and dominion over everything, which includes death, over everything, which includes our community, over everything, our destiny and the quality of our lives. If we truly believe that and that don't want to just make that lip service, but life service, how we show up, then we have to study to show ourselves through. And with cosmic economics, the universal keys to wealth, that we learn to apply principles that change you at a subconscious level that help you to begin to develop a mindset that's different from those that are around you who operate out of a poverty mindset. That's why Dr. Thaler G. Woodson said, if you can determine what a man shall think, you never have to concern yourself with what he will do. If you can determine 
what a man will think. Listen to what he said. If you can determine what a man will think, you'll never, you'll always be able to determine what he will do. Mm. Slaves obey out of fear. Servants obey out of love. So are you going to obey God out of fear of going to hell? Or are you going to obey God out of love because he loves you? So listen to what these are, listen to what he's saying about consciousness. Now, there's it, about four or five more minutes. I want, I want you to hear this because this is part of the series, Cosmic Economics. Now, I want you to, uh, now. That's, that, that's something that you program yourself. It just does not happen by itself. And so with the workbook, with the book itself, with the manual, with the guidance, prophecy, what you're able to do to is restructure your thinking. This literally is a step-by-step -step process for thought replacement and thought exchange. Do it as you work with it, as you apply these principles, as you practice with it, it can happen instantly. It took you years to formulate this kind of thinking. In order to transform out of that poverty consciousness, you need a prophecy, you need the tools that will help you to restructure your thinking. It's powerful. It's yeah. powerful. In fact, I have to buy a second to that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, when we first did this last time, we did cosmic economics. We did this at two different times. Now listen um, to the prophets. Lord is telling us, hey, just for the cosmic economics, and at that time, all you got was just the workbook. Yes, Master Prophet. Uh, we paid the first time five thousand dollars, over five thousand, because that's my whole family. Five thousand dollars first time. And then you did you stop? No, no, we took it the second time on the high seas, and, and there we paid over ten thousand dollars. You see that? Yeah, that's yes. amazing. Um, Prophet sent to how much? You say the more you pay, the more attention you With the more you pay, the more. Pay. Yeah, I like that. And the Prophet, the same. The more you pay, the more attention you pay. So when you give people stuff for free, they don't pay no attention. But when you invest in yourself, God rewards you not just for your seed, but for the fact that you invested in yourself. Now watch this. I want $5,000 the first time, $10,000 the second time. Why? The first time I paid $5,000. And you know, the second time I paid $5,000, whenever it's offered, I take the course. And I look at my life coming from a one bedroom apartment, you know, to, and you know, my story, my testimony and cosmic economics was part of that, uh, to owning a two bedroom townhouse and now a five bedroom home. What my thinking had to change because you can't go from that one area to the other unless something changes internally. And that's what Cosmic Economics is about. And I believe we all came here with wealth. But you know what? There's blockages. The wrong thoughts kept us from walking in. And Cosmic Economics will remove those blockages and cause you to walk into the wealth that God already has. Oh, and if you don't yeah. have a conscious effort that you're working to help to transform those thoughts, expand those thoughts, and to restructure how you see yourself and create a new belief system because according to the faith, be it unto you, what cosmic economics does by investing in yourself, you're creating a new belief system that allows you to produce a life that you dream about. Yes. In cosmic economics, Reverend Ike, I quote actually in the book, because I love keeping Reverend Ike as my spiritual father alive. You know, on, on page 27 here, cosmic principles that have the system open up the page. It says, God thought, and the law is the law by which the thought operates. And you know, it's so powerful because when you begin to understand that God is thought, uh, let's talk about the whole idea of the power of thought because I know you have learned, done what you've learned on Reverend Ike's sister. He always called Reverend Dr. Dr. Johnny Coleman. Absolutely. It is 
It is that statement is so radical. The most yeah. radical statement in the Bible is be not conformed to this world. Come on. Be transformed by mind. That's the most radical statement. Why? Stop my thought transformation by not thinking like everybody else. Now, by governing our thoughts, everything, all the achievement came out of the human mind. It is a result of a thought. And all accomplishments that happen to us first in the mind, the formulation of the thought, and then through the thought, they are manifested in the physical. Okay, hold it right there. So all things happen first in thought. Yes. In the beginning was the word. word. Yes. And the word is a, the child of the thought. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's brown, let's Go brown. Yeah. Let's brown. Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. You are dropping some science in here today. The word is the child of the thought. Wow. I'm going to leave it there. Wow. The word is the child of the thought. So once you receive the word, you have the child, but now you have to find how to manifest the thought. Go back to Cosmic Economics, page uh, uh, 35, the last four paragraphs in page 35. Read D. The kingdom? No. How? The last four paragraphs. How can we move? The last four paragraphs on page 35. Oh, 30, 36. That's right. 36. 36. No, 35. Last four paragraphs. Read. Oh, oh, I see. How can we move down the road of success? How, how can we start to expand our imagination? How can we begin to broaden our thinking? How can we begin to expand our horizons? How can we change where we are living? How can we change our outward experience? Continue to read. The way you change the outside, your surroundings is by going on the inside within yourself. Change will not come by going to God somewhere over the rainbow, like Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz. However, you must change your belief system because your thoughts are by what you believe. Until you change what it what it is on the inside of you, you are obligated to live with what is on the outside. Your things will not manifest until you can trick your mind into believing that they belong to you. You can be you can become a millionaire in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, the moment you can get your mind's eye to twinkle, you will change. For that is the moment. <laughs> listen, listen to what the prophet said. So how do I trick my mom? Now watch this. Every time someone meets an entertainer, their mind shifts. Mm -hmm. Man, you meet LeBron and oh, oh, the mind shift. You meet Magic, oh, oh, Michael Jackson, oh, the twinkling <laughs> of an eye. So you got to be able to shift your consciousness. Listen to what it says. You can become a millionaire in the twinkling of an eye. It's the shifting your, of your belief system. Mm -hmm. Listen to what Master Prophet said and, 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 and Les Brown. He said, you have to admit you deserve it. Amen. Uh, Amen. I received that. I Amen. deserve it. Amen. I deserve to be wealthy. I deserve, I deserve to be in good health. I, would, I deserve to have a stable mind. I deserve to have I deserve it. I deserve it. That's my right. It's my right. Jesus done already died. You mean to tell me I got to die again? Mm -hmm. I got to die in this life? Come on. What was this? Why would he die for me? And then I have to go through life 
in debt. And yeah. watch this. We only get 1% of what Methuselah got. We only get 1% of what Noah got. Noah lived in the 900 years. We only get 1%. Mm. So read, go, go to paragraph two, the parable of Jesus. The parable of Jesus talks about the pearl of great price. Now this is the subject tonight, the pearl of great price. Are you willing to sell everything you have to buy this pearl? Read. Mm. Every mind is a uh, merchant man in the marketplace of life every mind is continually transacting business um where was that, Is that, that quick? continually transacting business we transact business based on our thoughts or our level of consciousness because our thoughts are things People thoughts are, are things. Listen to what it said. Thoughts are things. Thoughts are things. Thoughts are things. Mm -hmm. Continue to read, D. People are continually buying and selling their belief system. In fact, you are buying your own belief system. When you understand your thoughts, you will also understand the kind of business you are transacting if you want a successful business you must have successful thoughts thoughts of failure will result in failed business therefore it is a paramount it is paramount that you change your belief system so that you can create the proper structure and environment on the outside of you Read. the merchant mind is continually transacting business buying and selling what what it believes. For example, if you were a furniture salesman, are you buying and selling furniture? No, you are buying and selling your beliefs. Furniture is only the output of what you believe. Mm -hmm. Likewise, real estate brokers are buying and selling their beliefs. Property or real estate mm -hmm. is, is only an extension of their belief system. Mm -hmm. For example, Donald Trump will be successful in any business that he became involved in. He entered the casino business and he was successful there. He entered the real estate market and he was successful there. In every area of business that he embarks upon, he is buying and selling his what he believes. Everyone is buying and selling their beliefs. The actual product does not matter. If you don't believe in the pr produce, then it will not sell. People made millions of dollars selling pet rocks. Mm -hmm. What it what it the rock that sold itself? Was it the rock that sold itself? No. What sold was the seller's belief in the product. Once you become cognizant of your own beliefs, you will know what you are selling to yourself. And you will also know what you are buying. For we buy and sell whatever the mind believes. Mm. So the question is, what are you buying? Every time you talk to someone, you are buying and selling. Because the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant man or a merchant mind. A mind is a man. When God said, let us make man in our own image. He was saying, let us make mind in our own image after our likeness. When God was ready to make man he could only make man out of himself because he was the only self that was available and man or mind was created so god he didn't make man first he made the mind first mm -hmm. and he breathed into the vessel man the breath of life so you are mind which is god's mind that's been transformed into world thinking. And now that we are awakening to who we are in Christ through the death, burial, and the resurrection, now we're coming back to ourselves. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, Amen. Look, the pearl, we're on page uh, 37. 
Go ahead and finish reading that, D. Some people Some will people. never enter. Some people will never enter into the blessings God ordained for them because of their belief system, the belief system that they purchase in the marketplace. Whenever you are engaged in a conversation, you are buying and selling. Whenever you believe an idea, you buy it with energy. Everything that God created, it, everything that God created is in the form of energy. Energy is in either one or two states, materialized or dematerialized. When you believe for something, your faith is in operation. For faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11 and 1. Faith is the substance of things. Faith gives substance to the things that you are hoping for. Those things that are in your dreams. Faith makes your dream a reality. Therefore, energy is money. You buy things with the energy or the money of your mind. In order for you to buy anything, you have to burn energy. The bills in your pocket are not money, but they are effects of money. Some things that you need may yet be in their dematerialized state. However, because they have not yet manifested does not mean that they do not exist. Desire is the proof that they exist. Thought are things. Thought are things. If, if you can think it, you can create it. God wants you to learn to operate with your mind. Listen to what he says. Energy, you, either you burn the energy of your physical body or the energy of your mind. Either mm. you buy with money or you buy with consciousness. Mm. You buy with consciousness first. Because when you buy with consciousness, that means you see the end before it comes. You create the end, not in the marketplace. You create the end at home. You create the end in your office. That's where you create the end. So now, uh, like Les Brown said, it takes time. Now, some people will operate quicker than others. Mm -hmm. And the more you open your life, the more you open your life, the more you say, Lord, I deserve to be happy. I deserve. Look. <sighs> Some people think because they get a divorce, they're going to be happy. Oh, I got a divorce. I'm happy now. No, you ain't happy. You made a bad decision. The right decision was to get married. The wrong decision that created divorce was your thinking. That's why you divorced. Because your thinking is off. Somebody in the relationship was not willing to give in to their pride. And so you always have to come to agreement, not a compromise. I think it's, I think it's difficult for us to understand in the society that we live in that the Lord has already gave us the answer to every question if we search it out. But here's the cop out. I agree to disagree. That's what we want to say. Well, I, uh, you know, we get into a conversation. I agree to disagree. There cannot be, how can two walk together unless they agree? That's what the Bible says. So you can't agree to disagree because you're still in disagreement and you're not walking together. But even though you're together, it don't mean that you're in agreement. You're in disagreement because you can't agree to disagree and then don't agree with what you're disagreeing with. It don't make sense. And so you have to shift kingdom. If you can't find the answer, look it up in the word. Amen. Google the word, Google Amen. the problem, put Bible in it, and then it'll give you the scripture. And if you study the scripture, it'll give you the answer. Amen. Amen. Buy with consciousness. You are the corn of every realm. Next principle. 
Come on, pro, uh, 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 um, Tyrone, read. I am the coin of every realm. I am the coin of every realm. Say, I, Many people. Say, I'm the coin of every realm. I, I am, am the, the coin, coin of, of every, every realm. realm. That means that no matter what realm you go into, you are able to function in that realm. If you go with, if you go in the Beverly Hills, you are able to function in Beverly Hills. That means, that means that your dress has to be equal. You're not gonna uh, dress like you're from Skid Row and going to Beverly Hills. Hell, everybody gonna know you from Skid Row. Mm. But if you're gonna go into Beverly Hills, you have to have the flair. You have to be, Paul said, listen to what Paul said. Paul said, I become all things to all men. I have learned how to abound and I have learned how to abase. That's what Paul said. He said, I can fit in anywhere I go. You got to learn how to fit in. You got to learn how to mingle. You got to learn, okay, you got to learn how to be in this crowd. You know, uh, uh, this particular area of Dallas where we want to purchase a house out here in Frisco where the Dallas Cowboys is. Well, one of the reasons why we want to go that, that direction is because they got the nice facilities now. Um, I can go see the Dallas Cowboys practice. I don't have to drive 20 or 30 miles. You know, the homes are different. You get smaller spaces. The, 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 uh, uh, the, the real estate market is higher. And so you have to strategize how you're going to do it, what you're going to do it. But yet, you have to appreciate where you are. Amen. Because if you don't appreciate where you are, if you're not grateful for where you are, if you're not thankful for where you are, you'll never cross the bridge. Thankfulness, gratefulness, praise is the steps that you take to the next level. Lord, I thank you. Listen to what um, um, the prophet has said. She said, I was in a one bedroom apartment near my son. My faith came to another level where we bought a two bedroom condo. Now I want you to know, this is New York. All of these people right here that's on TV with Master Prophet, Prophetess Kelly. Uh, and listen, they live in New York. It's expensive. Yes, uh, a two-bedroom condo may be 400000 And then she said, and then uh, Kaveen, Kaveen, how much is a condo in New York? <laughs> right now. I'm I not talking say, about then, right now. Um, I can't give you a direct estimate, but I know you're going to be paying out of pocket, like a lot. Yeah, yes. a brownstone is expensive. Mm -hmm. And so... Master Prophet, the people that are in the ministry, they weren't all people of wealth, but he raised them up. And listen, one lady paid five, five, Prophetess Kelly said the first time she paid $5,000. The second time she paid $10,000. And here we're on Zoom and we're trying to get this impartation and sometimes people never give. I don't say nothing because I know the day will come. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking to the future. I'm looking. God is raising up millionaires in a poverty pandemic. Mm. Amen. 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 God is raising up millionaires. I don't believe my circumstance. I don't believe. Yeah, I got a two-car garage. I got a three-bedroom house. But this is not what I want. In California, I had much more than this. Okay. I had a three-bed. Me and my we had a three-bedroom uh, garage and two two brand new Mercedes and ten thousand square foot front yard. The front yard was ten thousand square foot feet. Just the front yard. And the community was wonderful. So you, in other words, you got to dig deep in yourself. How bad do you want it? 
Mm -hmm. Or you can't sit there and blame somebody else for where you are. Amen. Amen. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? You got to break that mindset off of yourself. And, 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 and if you, if you grew up like I did, where my mom and dad didn't like each other that much because they come out of that, they come from the country. They weren't, my mother wasn't used to being in the city. It was the first time in her life in the fifties that she had ever left Virginia. She gets pregnant. My dad is there, but yet they can't teach me about, about life. They can't teach me about wealth because they live in poverty. Mm -hmm. And so you got an opportunity. You have to take this opportunity in your youth. And you have to use, listen to what it says, burn the energy. Buy with consciousness. Shift your thoughts. Let me just, uh, Tyrone, what you have to say? Um, I would say um, that's that's definitely true um, because even with us, everything is a uh, faith walk and we're purchasing before we see anything. We're purchasing with our mind. We, we manifesting things with our mind before we receive any manifestation of it. It's in our minds, in our head, and we start seeking it out. And uh, sure enough, it, it comes to pass. So um, with, with this message, we, we definitely think in that realm. And uh, we, we're always looking forward to more because our, our, our mind and our beliefs and our, our dreams are much bigger than where we're at. Now listen to this. I want you to read this last part because our time is almost up. Read many people. Um, it says many people are comfortable operating at a level where they are chasing material money. However, money is not material matter. It is something far greater. Money is spiritual. Money is within you. The reason why people are chasing material money is because they are not spiritual. You must begin to understand the vital principle of the kingdom, which is I am money. Say it, I am money. I, I am, am money. money. Again, I am money. I, I am money. money. I am wealth. I am wealth. wealth. I am prosperity. I, I am prosperity. prosperity. Continue to read. So that you can begin to operate in the correct belief system that you are the coin in every realm. There is no realm that exists in life where you do not have the power to exchange. How you understand this, this mystery, it, this vital principle of the kingdom, you will begin to access money in all levels, emotional, psychological, and then and finally the lowest level, which is material. Wow. So uh, money you will is the lowest level. Consciousness. Thought is the Most highest true. level of wealth. And so wow. if you don't handle your thoughts, it lowers your money. Mm. Because your thoughts are under attack. That's why cosmic economics deals with psychological warfare. Mm. Of the consciousness that we have been taught instead of the consciousness of the kingdom. Read, continue. We're almost done. You will automatically know what to do if you were to ever travel to another country and someone told you that your money had no value outside of your nation. You can imagine this scenario. What you thought the substantial money turns into monopoly money. In some nations, certain currency cannot trade in the bank because it is not respected. You may have exchanged thousands of American dollars in that country and left with a suitcase of their money only to attempt to exchange when you return where it is declared by the banks as worthless. Now you are stuck with some paper money that you and your 
children can play with until you go back to that nation because you are <laughs> not you are in a nation that did not respect the foreign coin. Okay, we're coming to the end. Read. However, the belief system, I am money, will be the coin of their realm. I Say, am. I am money. I, I am, am money. money. That is the coin of every realm. So every time you want to enter into a realm, you have to first become it. I am money. Amen. I am, money. I am success. success. I am wealth. Mm. I am happiness. Mm. I am joy. Read. I am will be the means of exchange because money is not paper. It is spiritual. Is money is spiritual. Money is not paper. The first thing that God asked for the children of Israel to do when they came out of slavery, you know what he said? Give me some money. That's like asking an old lady that's been single for 20 years and didn't have a job and was living on welfare. God came to her and said, I want your money. Mm. Read. Mm. The same consciousness that created that money can create a suitcase of your own money. You are the. Say, I am a say. I am. I am a suitcase. A, a suitcase full of money. Full, full of money. money. Hallelujah. Money. So 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 you see, money is the lowest form of wealth. Consciousness is the highest form. Prophet is Carter. Yep. So if you're going to function in a higher form of money, you have to shift how you think. You mm -hmm. have to shift how you see yourself. You have to shift. See, sometimes, let, let me tell you something. Sometimes I'll put on a suit, a new pair of shoes or something like that. I have shoes that I bought. I paid five hundred dollars for them. I got alligator shoes, seven hundred dollars, and and and, and the, I barely wear them anymore. The point is, what are you worth? How do you see yourself? A person can, you know, I remember one time. My car note, profitless car note was $923 a month. That was on a brand new Mercedes. 920, you know, and somebody asked her one day, well, what's your car note? $923. She said, oh, that doesn't include full coverage insurance. You know what they said? Man, I can buy a house for that. That's your consciousness. Mm -hmm. I can buy the house, drive the car. Amen. It Amen. depends on where your consciousness is. Amen. Amen. Thank you, man. Where's your consciousness? Amen. Where's your faith? Money is spiritual. And then when you treat money spiritual, you'll treat yourself spiritual. Amen. Because then you'll realize, oh, I'm money. I got to watch my thoughts. Oh, I can't think that. The greatest curse on the earth is gossip. Mm. When you accidentally talk about people, when you say things about people that you shouldn't say, you know why you say it? Because you're jealous. It's something in them that caused you to be jealous. And let me tell you, as long as you have a consciousness of wealth and wealth begin to flow to you and wealth begins to come to you, realize God will put you in a rhythm. God will put you in a rhythm. A, ryth a rhythm of wealth a rhythm of money, a rhythm of finance. Come on, say, Lord, put us in a rhythm. Lord, put us in a rhythm. Come on, put your hands like this. Bring, breathe in the light. Say, Lord, put us in a river. Put us in a, put us in a rhythm of wealth. Put us in a consciousness of wealth. Put us in a consciousness of wealth. And, and when you get in that rhythm, don't let the wheel lock up. Amen. When that wheel lock up, you need to check your thought. Mm. Wow. That means something wrong with your thought. You've been thinking something out of 
that's not conforming to the kingdom, but to the world. Let's yeah. finish reading this. The same consciousness, the, this, this, I'm a, uh, the same consciousness that create that money can create a suitcase of your own money. You are the corn of every realm. Wealth, material, soulish, spiritual. You must harbor the belief system that you say. Continue to read. There is no Pro realm. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. There is no realm that exists that I can do business in. I possess within me the highest coin, which is a master key, a master coin, and that coin is I am. I am money. Money is the only substance that Jesus placed on the same level as God, Jesus said. Serve God or mamma. Money should be understood for the power it ex exert, exerts. We are called to multiply the substance which God places in our hands. However, money must never sur surplant God as our Lord and Savior. Our dependency must always rest upon him. And, and so listen, listen, to, listen to what Jesus said. Jesus put money on the same level as God. He said, man cannot serve money and God. So he said, you must learn to serve me that created money. money. I'll give you the consciousness of what I have created, how I created money, so you can create. Mm -hmm. And now I give you the key. I am. See, it's not just money. I am money. Jesus mm -hmm. said, I am the rose of Sharon. I am the bright and money morning star. I am the resurrection. I am the life. What did he do? He put the principle of the, that he gave the Jews, tell them I am sent you. Amen. When you go to money, say money. Money. I have sent me for you. I am. Amen. I am. So I Amen. want to thank each and every one of you. And I want you to be conscious, very conscious. 10 o'clock, we do a couple minutes of worship and um, focus yourself and let's let God keep us in this vein. So, Amen. I'm the corn of every realm. And what was the other subject tonight? The pearl of great price. So what is the pearl of great price? You're thinking. You're thinking. It's thinking. Yeah. It's the pearl of great price. And you got to be willing to sell. That's why people invest in their education. They're willing to sell all they have so their children can go to school. Yeah. The pearl of great price. Have a wonderful day, everybody. And, and those of you that want to give into the word, just go to Cash Chap or go to the website. And remember, remember, <laughs> I am that I am. <laughs> and say that prayer. Go back to page 33 or 34 and make sure you say that prosperity prayer. Listen, keep, keep your energy up. Don't let anything attack your mind. Keep your mind clear. If, if something is coming, if, if there are breakdowns, things you must analyze, analyze it from in here. God in me, show me. You said you would show me things to come. Yes, Lord. Now give me the wisdom. Yes, God. Give me the wisdom. Come on, say it, Lord. Give me the wisdom. Give me, give me the, the Lord. Give me the wisdom. Give me the wisdom. Say, Father, I thank you. Father, I thank that I, thank you. that I have the answer. That I have the answer. For all breakdown. 
for all breakdowns. Watch this. If your car breaks down, if you have a flat, you get it fixed and you get right back on the road. Amen. Sometimes we have these types of breakdowns in life. Fix it mentally. Amen. Fix it mentally. Okay. Let me fix this. Let me let me go in. Or I'm going to do without. All you got to do. Just go in. Go to your go to your peaceful place. Go to your happy place. I went I went to the dentist to get a get a tooth pulled and they gave me that oxygen and I was like, "Woo woo." And the dentist came in and they shot me up. And then she said, are you on your happy place? I said, I sure am. She said, you know where my happy place is? I said, no. She said, well, I like to be on the moon. And I put my feet, I like to sit on the tip of the moon and hang my feet. And I said, woo, that's deep, dog. <laughs> that night just it had me going, boy. <laughs> yeah. Have a blessed night. Amen. 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 Amen.